In this video we're going to have a look at tutorial 8 question 3. So the first thing to note in this tutorial is that here we're asked for the Taylor expansion of some function about x equals naught. And really all that's asking us is to find the Taylor polynomial. The next thing to note is that we're asked to find the Taylor polynomial about the point x equals naught, and just to point that sometimes this is called the Maclaurin series, the Maclaurin polynomial, or the Taylor polynomial. The next thing is that we notice that we're asked to just find the coefficient of x cubed, so we don't actually have to find the whole Taylor expansion, we just want the, co the coefficient of x cubed. If we write out the Taylor polynomial formula for our sine of 3x, what we're going to have is we want f evaluated at 0 plus the first derivative evaluated at 0 times x plus the second derivative evaluated at 0 over 2 factorial times x squared plus the third derivative evaluated at 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed. And the thing that we're actually looking for is this coefficient. We want the third derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 3 factorial. So let's go ahead and start differentiating our function. So we've got f of x is 6e to the 4x sine of 3x. The first derivative is going to be 24e to the 4x times sine x sine of 3x, sorry, plus, now I've got 18e to the 4x cosine of 3x. Don't forget your chain rule of differentiation. And then I have a look at this and think, oh my goodness, I have to take the second derivative of this. This is going to be the product rule twice. I really don't want to have to do this. Can we find a different way? So the good news is, yes, we can find a different way. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the function that we're interested in, which is e to the is 6e to the 4x sine of 3x. And we note that we want to find the coefficient of x cubed in the Taylor expansion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a Taylor expansion for e to the 4x. And I'm going to find one for sine of 3x, and then I'm going to multiply them together and see how that goes. So I know that e to the x is approximately equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial, where what I've done is I've only gone as far as the coefficient that we're interested in. So we're interested in x cubed so I've gone as far as x cubed. But notice that this is e to the x. What I really want is e to the 4x. But the useful thing about Taylor polynomials is that what I can do is I'm going to replace x with 4x. And that's going to give me a Taylor polynomial for e to the 4x. So e to the 4x is approximately equal to, now my 1 doesn't change. But now wherever I see an x, I replace it with a 4x. So that's a 4x. Now I've got to have a 4x all squared. So be careful, the 4 is inside the squared. And that's all divided by 2. Plus, and now I've got a 4x all cubed divided by 3 factorial. And I can write that out neatly as 1 plus 4x plus 8x squared plus, uh, I'm going to just leave that as 64 over 3 factorial times x cubed. Now I'm going to play the same game with 
sine of x. So I know that sine of x is approximately equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial. So I've only gone as high as x cubed. So I'm going to replace my x with 3x so that I now have a Taylor polynomial for sine of 3x which is approximately equal to 3x plus 3x all cubed. 3 factorial, which I can write as 3x minus 27x cubed over 3 factorial. So how does this help me? Well, now I can say that my original function, 6e to the 4x times sine of 3x, is approximately equal to 6 times the Taylor expansion that I found for e to the 4x, so that's 1 plus 4x plus 8x squared plus 32x cubed over 3 times the Taylor expansion for my sine of 3x, which is 3x minus 27x cubed over 3 factorial. Now you might have a look at this and think, oh my goodness, I really don't want to multiply that out. But remember, we want the coefficient of x cubed. So we don't actually need the whole thing multiplied out. We just want those terms which give us an x cubed. So let's have a look. If I say 1 times 3x, that's not going to give me an x cubed. And, but if I say 1 times minus 27x cubed, that is. So that's a term that I want to keep. So I'm going to have 6 times minus 27 over 3 factorial x cubed. Let's have a look. Um, now we've got our 4x times 3x won't give me an x cubed. 4x times an x cubed term won't work, so that doesn't give me an x cubed. But if I have a look, I've got an 8x squared times a 3x, that will give me an x cubed. So I'm going to have plus 6 times 24x cubed. And if we have a look, all the other multiplications won't give me an x cubed. So I've got an x squared times an x cubed won't will give me an x to the 5. And then finally, x cubed times x cubed will give me an x to the 6. So I only have two terms out of my multiplication that give me an x cubed. And I've got those written down. And if I simplify that out, that gives me 117 x cubed. So what we've finally worked out is that our coefficient that we were looking for is 117. So our final answer would be the coefficient of x cubed is 117.